Now, welcome back to the Weekly Why. This week we have Parsha Balak. So we're making our way uh, through the book of the Minbar, the book of Numbers. And this Parsha is uh, one of the most interesting Parshas because it's uh, fairly unique in the sense that it almost certainly excludes any mention of um, or any picture of uh, Israel, the Jewish people. And that very much it's kind of a, a foreign or external uh, description of what's going on, you know, um, outside of what's happening with the uh, the Israelites. So that's an interesting perspective. But I'd like to uh, take a look at one of the ideas here. Balak, with the name of the Parsha, Balak was a Moabite king, and that he was uh, concerned the Jewish people uh, that they were they had recently defeated two kings, uh, King uh, Sihon and Og and just a couple uh, Amorite kings nearby, and he was concerned that the Jewish people who were massing basically on his borders, near his borders, they were going to become a physical threat to him. So he was concerned at the, his kingdom and at its safety, and so he hired a, um, a prophet, let's call him a non-Jewish prophet, the prophet's name was Bilaam, and he hired this prophet to curse the Jewish people uh, in order so that he would be protected. So a couple of interesting things happened. So in the book of uh, number, excuse me, the book of Deuteronomy, Devarim, we learn that in fact God had forbidden the Jewish people from uh, attacking the land of Moab. It says here, God instructed the Jewish people not to distress the Moabites or to provoke them to war. And that's in Deuteronomy chapter 2. And the reason for that, again, is that uh, because this land, the Moabites land, was promised to Lot, which was Abraham's nephew. Basically, long story short, the Jewish people were promised by God, or were told by God, don't attack this land, okay? So if you're, if you're Balak, the king, well, you can be expected for not to not know that. I mean, you know, why would you know that the Jewish people were told by God not to attack you? For all you know, it seems very logical. I mean, they're amassing at your borders. You know, it certainly seems like a threat, right? Um, but the interesting thing here is that Bilaam, who is the prophet uh, who was hired by this king, uh, we are told in the book of Numbers in the same parsha it says that Bilaam heard God's sayings and perceived thoughts of the Most High. The Most High is God, right? So basically, this same verse in the book of Numbers in this parsha is saying, Abba, Bilaam knew. So in other words, even though the king Balak, who was scared that the Jewish people would take over, he had no reason to know that the Jewish people were forbidden from attacking him. But Bilaam, this prophet, he knew this. So the question is, why didn't Bilaam the prophet simply say to his boss, the man who hired him, you know, you have nothing to worry about. I know because I'm a prophet, because I heard that the words of God, I know the Jewish people are forbidden from attacking you. Why didn't he just say that? Why did he go along with it if he knew that basically Balak the king had no, uh, had no rational, had no fears, you know, he had nothing to be worried about. So the, the commentator Rashi points out that really this is the difference between the two, the two men and their approaches. That Balak, the king, had a very rational hatred of the Jewish people. Um, he didn't hate them for any kind of a philosophical reason. He hated them for a very real practical reason. Is that they had defeated two kings you know, next door and that they were a threat to him, right? But Bilam, the prophet, he had no real logical hatred of them, right? It wasn't that there was any particular reason. Again, we knew is that he knew that they were not going to attack. His was just a complete, baseless, just a complete raw hatred of the Jewish people, right? So what's interesting is that, you know, Balak the king had hired Bilaam to uh, curse the Jewish people. But not only did God allow these curses, he allowed him to speak. And it's not just as the, it's not as if the curses just didn't happen, but that they were transformed into blessings, right? It's not as if, you know, he just wasn't allowed to speak or he became mute, but that the curses were transformed into blessings. So I think we have a couple very interesting ideas here. Uh, one of them is that basically is that had it was, say, uh, Balak, the king, if his words had become uh, transformed into blessings, what would it be? Well, his hatred was very logical. It was very specific, you know, it's because of a specific cause. I hate the Jewish people because of ABC, right? So therefore, his curses would have become very moderate, you know, um, blessings, right? You know, if his curses were dependent on something, then his blessings would be dependent on something. But rather, Bilaam, whose curses were completely over the top, right? He hated the Jewish people for no logical reason whatsoever. His blessings became the most you know, uh, the most boundless expressions of love, you know, to the Jewish people. So they went from one extreme completely there, from A to Z. Whereas Balak the king, his were much more logical, much more dependent on certain things. 
And so certainly Pirkei Avot, which is eth Ethics of the Fathers, teaches us in the fifth chapter in the 19th mission, it says, you know, any love which is dependent on something, you know, that love will cease once that, uh, that uh, condition has, has disappeared, right? In other words, any love which is conditional upon something is not going to last. So we see here that uh, the most powerful kind is something which is, is boundless and is not dependent on something specific. So again, we see that Bilam, who had the most hatred, boundless, rational, you know, completely irrational hatred of the Jewish people, that was the cause, that was the vehicle for the most boundless, unbelievable statements of love and, and blessings for the Jewish people. And so I think that's something that we should uh, take into uh, to hearts ourselves, and that, and that firstly, that the love uh, that we express for, for others, for, that we see from God, that should not be uh, dependent on a specific thing, because again, that's not love, that's a much more practical and, uh, and logical, that's not love at all. What love is that kind of that boundless giving and appreciation that, uh, that uh, God gives to us. So that's the, hopefully the thought that we should leave from, from this, and just connect this briefly to a time period that we're entering very soon. Um, we're in the month of Tammuz now, and next week uh, is a fast day. We uh, commemorate a number of uh, terrible things which have happened to the Jewish people on the 17th of Tammuz. Then three weeks later, we have uh, Tisha B'Av, the ninth day of the month of B'Av. And that kind of combinates those three weeks, very bad uh, period for the Jewish people. So my hope and blessing for us is that we can take these three weeks and connect the two and to understand that uh, basically the same hatred, the same boundless hatred which turns into boundless love uh, or blessing from Bilam, is that we should hopefully take uh, these three weeks in a time when the Jewish people were fraught with dangers and with tragedy, that we can learn to uh, appreciate what we have and uh, love the Jewish people and hopefully we can uh, rebuild and, and rectify what we've made a mistake in the past. So again, that's Parsha Balak for this week. And uh, again, uh, just a small note, a uh, personal note for the weekly one. Uh, if anyone actually happens to know, I'm uh, currently looking for new job opportunities. So if anyone wants to help out Rob from the Weekly Y, knows of any job opportunities in uh, either corporate sales or PR, like public relations, communications, just post uh, any leads you might have on the comment wall. I'd very much appreciate it. Okay, best wishes. Shabbat shalom. God bless.